Okay, so here we are with part two of our parallax gymnast animation. So uh, let's hop right into it and go through all the steps and all the stuff that we need. So first thing we need to do, again, I haven't done anything yet, just opened up uh, After Effects. So first thing we'll do is import our assets. I'm gonna right click inside the uh, box in my project window and choose import file. Now with this one, it's important that you uh, notice something before you import this. Um, we have a PSD right here and that's what we're gonna import. Notice we have some options down here. We're gonna see these same options in After Effects. Um, so we can either change it there or change it here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, as far as enable all acceptable files, that's fine just how it is. That just allows us to import anything that After Effects will accept. But this import option is really important. Right now, it says import as footage, which basically means, if you look at our options here, it basically means it's going to flatten it and pretty much turn it into a JPEG. It's going to treat it like a QuickTime video file. Uh, and in video files, there's no need to retain layers or layer styles or anything like that. So we need to let uh, After Effects know we're not working with video. Um, and while it does give us the option of composition, that's not good enough. Because if we do that, if we import it into a project that's set at 1280 by 720, it's going to shrink everything to fit, which can be helpful. But in this case, we want to retain layer sizes, basically meaning we don't want after Effects or Photoshop or Finder to resize any of our work for us. Um, so we'll choose that and it's automatically going to create a composition but let's go ahead and just click OK so you can see what our next option is. So I clicked OK and now I'm in After Effects and now we have the pretty much the same window. Import kind, composition, retain layer sizes and then you also see this layer option editable layer styles. So layer styles are things that show up and they come up in Photoshop if you uh, click the little effects button underneath your layers you'll see some basic uh, effects like drop shadow, stroke, bevel emboss, fill color, things like that that are really helpful in Photoshop and the nice thing about this is this allows us to edit them uh, in After Effects so it doesn't bake them into the layer so to speak. Um, you can go in and adjust the drop shadow once you've animated it. So I'll click OK and let that load up. And just to show you what I'm talking about, up here, layer, layer styles. These are, you know, a handful of effects taken straight from Photoshop um, that we can add in After Effects and that we can modify in After Effects, even if they were created in Photoshop. The rest of our effects we pull from the Effects tab. Okay, so now that I have my comp, I'm going to simply, and now notice I have two options here. I have the pre-comp that it created, or it's actually just a regular comp. And then I have my layers. So if I wanted to just bring in the background or bring them in individually, I could. But since it is a multi-layered uh, project, it just puts it into a comp for us. So I'm just going to drag this in. And actually, all I really need to do is double click on it. And that will open it. Um, and so, at this point, I'm going to just check all my layers, turn off that layer, that layer's good, turn off that layer, it's pretty good. And uh, with that, we're ready to get started. Now, what we're gonna do is we are going to spread these layers out in Z space. So what is Z space? Well, Z space is depth, okay? Uh, there's, imagine a horizontal bar going side to side, that's your x-axis, a vertical bar would be your y-axis, and then there'd be another bar facing towards the back of that, <laughs> the back of that, uh, stadium, and towards us, and that would be the z-axis. So first thing I need to do in order to separate these out in z-space is to make them 3D. Um, now, right now, if you notice down here, we don't have the option because we're set to modes. So we need to click toggle, switches, and modes. And by doing that, then I can come over to this guy right here, which is our 3D layer. And notice it says, allows this layer to be, to be manipulated in three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. So we'll go ahead and click that for all of these. And we'll click it for the entire project to turn it on. Okay, 
So once we've done that, um, I'm going to go ahead and add a camera so you can really see what's happening. Um, let's go ahead and choose layer new camera. Now we're going to get into some of these settings in the camera, but for right now we really don't need to make sure of much other than that it is set to a one node camera rather than a two node. Uh, one node cameras are a little easier to work with when you have one subject. We'll talk about both of them. Uh, I'll set the preset to something like, mm, I don't know, 50 millimeters, pretty good size. And I'll drop the f-stop down a little bit. I'm not worried about depth of field at the moment. Uh, but if I am, I usually drop the depth, the f-stop down to about 2.8 or so. Um, and we'll mess with this to get blur later. Uh, for now, I'm going to turn off the depth field and just click OK. And by default, nothing happens. That just gives us a tool that we can then use later down the road once we have this separated. So let's go ahead and separate these right now. And I'll start with, let me go ahead and label this layer. This is my gymnast. I'm just going to right click on it. Actually, I'm going to double click on it. Click and then click again. Nope, opened it in its own layer. Let's try one more time. Click and hit return. <laughs> there we go. Gymnast. So if you select it and hit return, it works just like a finder layer. So first thing I'm going to do is push the background far away in Z space. Let's go ahead and select it and hit the P key. And notice now we have X, Y, and Z. So the odd thing about after effects or the things you thing you need to know is which direction is forward and which direction is backwards if you are bringing it into negative numbers you are bringing it towards the camera if you are pushing it into positive values you are pushing it away from the camera so i'm going to go ahead and just type in 5000 okay so i just pushed that 5000 pixels away from the camera and to show you that, I can come down to where it says active camera and I can opt for a custom view. Now this isn't going to change anything. It's just going to give me a different view. And then notice I have a lot of options here. But watch if I go with custom view. Okay, so what it did was it gave me kind of an, a, a high diagonal view. And if I choose the camera unified camera tool, I can actually move this around even more. Um, there's three tools inside the unified camera orbit tool. The first one, and you hit the C key to, uh, actually there's four tools, and you hit the C key to toggle between them. So right now I have the unified camera tool. If I click and drag, this is what happens. Everything moves around basically freely. It's pretty much a 360 degree rotational tool. And you can see exactly what I'm seeing, what the camera is seeing, and uh, you know it helps. Um, if I hit C again, see that's the tool I just had. <laughs> if I hit C now, now I have the side to side or up and down tool. And you can kind of tell by the fact that it's got four arrows. Uh, the next tool is going to be the zoom in and zoom out tool. So watch what happens if I click and drag up, I zoom in, and if I drag down, I zoom out. And this kind of gives you a little bit of a preview of what your parallax is going to look like, because essentially that's all we're going to do, is just dolly the camera. And I should say dolly in and dolly out, not zoom in and zoom out, um, because we're seeing parallax, so clearly it's not a zoom. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> if I go back to my, my active camera, you see we're right back to where we started. And what I need to do now is go to that background and now that I've pushed it back in Z space, notice perspective has made it smaller. So I need to scale it back up. So I'm gonna hit the S key, go to scale and scale it until it fits the screen. Now, my first concern when I first did this was that I was gonna trash the resolution of this image. But for whatever reason, after Effects doesn't do that. Uh, After Effects is able to maintain that image's resolution even uh, though we've pushed it back in space and then scaled it up to 240%. So, once we've done that, 
we really don't need to reposition much more. The only thing we're really going to do after this is animate the camera to, zoom, to dolly forwards. Depending on how you want to animate it, you could dolly backwards or forwards. But let's just go with something basic for now. Um, the nice thing about the camera is that animating its position is just like animating anything else. You hit P, and now you have your X, uh, your X axis, your Y axis, and the one that we're going to work with, Z axis. And so here we see basically a preview of what our parallax animation is going to look like, although we can do more with this than just simply dollying. But generally speaking, parallaxes are what we call a subtle animation. Um, I'm also noticing that my, my bar is a little low. Notice I can see kind of, I want it up there a little higher. So before I animate the camera, I'm going to go down to my bar. And I'm just going to use, I'm going to hit P, and just use the shift and the arrow keys to nudge it upwards. Kind of to write about where it was originally. There we go. All right, so now that that's fixed, now I can basically do my animation. And there's really two methods I can use. Both of them are simply going to change the value of the Z space. Um, and so I can either do it numerically using this, or I can use the unified camera tool set to the track Z camera tool, which is basically your dolly. Uh, so I can do it by hand, or I can do it numerically. Let's go ahead and show you a quick example of both. So let's say that I want to start maybe pushed in a little bit and pull out from this shot. So I again just set it to where I think it looks good. Let's say right about there. I add a keyframe by clicking the stopwatch and then I back up the, uh, the playhead to about six seconds here. And again six might even be long. Let's drop it down to four. Well, let's keep it at six, whatever. And then I'm just going to change the value of my Z parameter. And I'm pretty much just going to keep going until I run out of screen space. Okay, and you can see my bar. I can see a little black on the side of the screen there. So I know that I've gone too far. So that's about as much as I have right there. And there's my two keyframes. Let's take a look. Now, when you first preview something, it has to render. You can see it's rendering these effects. And so it's not going to play at full speed. Uh, but even at, at uh, even playing back slowly, we can see the parallax starting to take effect. And now we'll stop it and watch it again. And there you go. Nice, smooth motion. Looks good. Okay. Again, I wouldn't want to go any faster than that. At least not in this case. I'm also going to go ahead and trim my project down to, I'll go eight seconds for now. Because that was only the first part of the project. And if you wanted to, if you weren't going to go quite as far, you could even add a little bit of turn in the camera. Let's try that. I haven't done that in a while. Um, the only downside is you can't push it quite as wide because it's going to skew the perspective of the, uh, I mean, it's basically looking at the PSD from an angle. Anyways, we'll, we'll try that one in class. Uh, what I want to do right now is show you the next step, and this is where it gets interesting. As if the parallax wasn't enough, now we are going to animate our gymnast. And the way we do this is with the Puppet tool, which is right up here. And I know that for the newest version of After Effects, they've actually improved the Puppet tool. They've added a few new uh, features. They've made it move a little more realistically. But I'm not thinking that we're going to have the 2019 version uh, anytime soon. So we'll, we'll start here and work our way into the, the newer version. Um, and the fact is, it, it works exactly the same. So. If we turn the Puppet tool on, we see a couple options. Mesh, Expansion, and Density, and even Record Options. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the Mesh first. 
So what the puppet tool is going to do, and let's go ahead and put some points in. I'm going to go ahead and the way this works is you put points to keep things in place and then you put points to allow things to move. So I'm going to, let's just start with this leg. and Let's say we want it to bend naturally. So she's just jumping. She's going to be landing it appears like. So that foot would be coming down. Uh, this one might be going up a little bit. So, you know, you just got to think these things out before you start animating. So I'm going to go ahead and back up to right about here. And I'm going to put a point in this leg. And I'm going to put a point at the knee. And maybe even a point at the ankle. And if I was really motivated, I would do the toes too. Uh, but for now, we'll just go with the leg. So by adding those points, it's kind of like putting little stopwatches. It's basically going to give me the ability to animate those. And sometimes when I'm dealing with like a leg and I don't want any of this to move, I'll put a couple points in here. But let's go ahead and show the mesh now. So the mesh, oops, I'm just trying to drag this down. So the, there you go. So this is what they call a pretty low fi mesh, meaning that it doesn't have a ton of subdivisions. Um, and when we animate, let's go ahead and animate so you can see how the mesh works. Um, I've made those points, so all I have to do now to animate them is change my position in time. To go all the way to six seconds here. And I will start by grabbing this foot and dragging it down a little bit. And maybe dragging the knee up just a hair, but notice how the entire body's moving now. I don't want that. So this is why I might come in and add a few more points. Now, the problem is I didn't add those at the beginning of the project, so let me back up and then add those points. Okay, now I'll come back to where I was making my animations. So I got the foot to bend a little. Now let's see. Let's uh, Actually, I forgot what I did. Let's back up and see. Okay, yeah, I bend her at the knee. And I bend the foot down a little, and maybe the knee up a bit. And she's still moving a little more than I want her to, but that's okay. And now I have created an animation. And as far as, you know, really fine tuning it, you gotta take your time with this. It probably would have helped to put a few more pins through her up here in her body so that these ones weren't as affected by this. And that's basically what happens is that the more pins you have, the less these ones will affect it. But let's just look at it once with the mesh. And there's the foot moving. Again, subtle movement, nothing too overt. Looks pretty good. And again, it's rendering, that's why it's playing back slow. Plus it's showing this mesh, which is extra uh, thinking for the computer. But you can see, it uses these meshes to create the animation. And if you make these meshes more detailed, you can make your animations more detailed and subtle and have a little more control. But the problem is, the more mesh you create, it really does take a toll on your computer's CPU. Um, so you kind of have to find a, a, you know, where your computer functions best, I suppose. And now let's go ahead and turn the mesh off. Take a look at it. If I hit Shift Command H, it should remove my overlays. Shift Command H. It doesn't seem to want to do it with the, with the uh, puppet tool. But you can see we're clearly bending this image. Does it look realistic? Eh, not bad. Leg looks a little weird at the end there. Like maybe it's getting it's like shortening, and then it appears to stretch almost. Maybe it's just those toes. Okay. Well, regardless, fine tuning is something I'll do on my own time. So that's the first part. And what else do we need to know? Let's go ahead and turn the mesh on, and we'll choose the expansion options. Right now, it's expansion set to three. Actually, I'm going to set that back to three. I'm going to set the density higher. Now, look at my, my mesh now. By increasing the density, I've increased the subdivisions. And the more subdivisions you have, the more, uh, the more you can accomplish. And as far as expansion, 
that's not something I want to use right now. You can see what it does. It's just like mask expansion. It's expanding it beyond my subject. For now, leaving expansion at three is fine. Uh, and as far as the density is concerned, I could try to bump it up. Uh, but again, let's take a look. Let's see what we got. Notice that after changing those, it wants to re-render. It's definitely not looking overtly fake, which sometimes can happen with the puppet tool. That's why you got to keep it to a minimum. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and add a couple more points and call this a tutorial. I'm going to back up a little more and grab my puppet tool. And what do I want to animate next? Well, first off, this starting point doesn't make using the puppet tool much easier. But the fact is, I can really just come in here and add points and animate them when I get to the end of the sequence. Um, so let's see here. Hold down shift. Probably put one in her forearm. Try to put one in her elbow, one in her hand, one in this hand, one in that elbow, and maybe one in the armpit. In fact, since these are going to be sort of the anchors, I'm going to put three in each of these. Um, okay. Now I know you can't really see what's going on, but you can see the mesh and you can see enough to kind of know what we're going to be dealing with in a second. Because again, we don't have to make the animation until we get to the end of the sequence or of the clip. So now that I'm here, now I can go in and maybe drop this knee a little bit, bring that ankle up a touch. Uh, let's see, hand would have been up, so maybe it's coming down a little towards the landing. Drop that elbow too. Again, that I feel like I might have just made that get weird. And this would probably be coming up a little bit, but I don't want to move her head and her hair too much. Quite honestly, I probably should have selected this arm in Photoshop and put it on its own layer so that I could animate it without affecting the hair. But I could also add in some points here and see if that works. So let's back it up a little bit. Turn the mesh off. Um, and hit play. And we'll let it render. So again, you gotta let it render once through to see what's going on, to let it, let it play back. But you can see each one of those points is moving just a little bit. Okay. All right, watch one more time, looking for the movement in the upper hand. Not really seeing as much as I was hoping to see. So I will go back here and increase the movement a little bit. All right, back it up. There we go, now we're seeing some movement there. Okay, so what is clearly happening here is that if we go down to uh, our effect, let's take a look behind the, uh, the engine here and see what's going on. So 
if we go to our gymnast layer and we go to effects and we drop it down there will be a keyframe for every one of those puppet points we added if we come over here to mesh drop this down and choose deform here's all of our pins okay each one of these represents one of those points from our puppet tool. If I click puppet, there we go. So you kind of have to figure out which one is which. Um, and that can be tricky. <laughs> Let's see if we can, so there we go. So that's number 20 right there. Um, but what I'm noticing, and the whole reason I'm doing this, is because the animation's messed up. It's sort of, I must have not had the playhead in the right spot, because we're seeing a lot of movement right there. And we don't want that. All of our movement is being crammed between those two spots. So basically, I just want to get rid of these first keyframes. Uh, because I've got my initial beginning keyframes all down here, and those are all good. But for some reason, I accidentally created duplicates. And that was because my playhead wasn't over these keyframes when I made those adjustments. So right now, these are circles. And by default, that means you can't adjust them. So what we have to do is dr use the drop down window and now notice if I go to pin 15 and I drop it down now I can see the keyframes. So I can select it and delete it. And I am going to do that for each of these. Cuz again what happened was I add I made changes and when I modified them the playhead wasn't in the right spot. And so it created two keyframes about a half a frame apart. Well, not a half a frame, a full frame apart. Uh, and that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to overwrite these existing end keyframes. Now these existing end keyframes will represent the motion. So let's go ahead and take a look again. And we should see a lot more happening now. Uh, oh, any other duplicates I need to worry about? I don't think so. So I know this might seem intimidating because there's so much going on here, but there really isn't that much. It's actually really nice. You've got the ability to fine tune or you know work individually with any one of these puppet points um, by coming down here and going to mesh and choosing deform, selecting the point. Like let's select point number one. Okay, that was the first point we added. And then I can I can modify that however I want. I can adjust it numerically, or I could grab it and you know move it around. Um, so for now, that's what I was after. Let's go ahead and hit the play button and watch the movement. We'll let it render real quick. All right, and there we go. Now we're seeing some motion, and I like it. So. I'm gonna come over here and click off the puppet tool, click off the gymnast layer, and there we go. Now we don't have any pins, and if we look, we can see, kind of looks like slow motion. And if we wanted to, we could even maybe keyframe her dropping just a little bit, maybe rotating just a hair, but for now, I am happy with what we've got here. The only thing I might consider changing just for the sake of curiosity, is rather than zooming out, maybe zooming in. And you'll notice I have these two keyframes on my camera. If I want to change that from a zoom out, excuse me, a dolly out to a dolly in, I can just reverse these two keyframes. Where'd my first one go? There's my, there's my second one. You know what, I got them both selected. I have to deselect them. Then select slide this one this way and then slide that one that way and I've basically taken the end keyframe and put it at the beginning and so now we will do the opposite camera move we will dolly forward which might look better you know because you're kind of zooming into the subject And there's always the possibility that that zoom is, or excuse me, that dolly is just a little too extreme. And that maybe we want to land closer to her face or with her centered in the shot. And the good news is that's an easy change to make. 
Or maybe we want to go right past her. So if I did want to mo modify my camera move, again, it's just as simple as adjusting these position values. There's no magic going on here. All I need to do is make sure I'm parked over this keyframe. And since you saw me think that I was earlier, but I wasn't, I'm going to actually use these arrows here to jump and put me right on top of that keyframe so there's no chance that I miss it. And now that I've done that, I can turn the camera this way a little, drop it down a little bit, and maybe even pull it back just a touch so that we have a little more. And again, you just have to sort of make the change and examine it, see if you like it. Not too bad. And that is it for Parallax Animations with the Puppet Tool. Go ahead and hit Command S to save. And I can send it over to my render queue at any point.